Okay, so let's go through a quick integration example. And this one, I know you can look a triangle up in the tables, but let's go ahead and show that one third base, one third height, the, the results from the table you can actually get from integration. And then at the end, we'll go ahead and, and throw a couple numbers in for these dimensions to, because some people just like numbers. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to have some kind of an equation that describes this shape. So if we look at this line right here, it's just a straight line. So the slope of this line is the rise over run, height over the base A. So we have this equation for the line. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that equation to add up each little element. So there's, there's kind of two different ways to find the center of mass. Remember, if you have common shapes that you can look up in a table, you add together the area of each shape and the centroid of each shape. So you just add up all those little bits and then divide by the overall area, and that will get you the centroid. What happens in integration is these summation signs are going to turn into integrals. And each little bit that you're adding up here, this is just one of the elements in your integration. Okay, so if I want to find the overall centroid of the entire triangle, so this capital X is for the entire triangle, I'm going to take each little piece, so that, like this little pink element, and the centroid of this little pink element, and I'm going to add together each, each of these little pieces. So this turns into an integral and then I'm going to divide this by the overall area. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about the area of this entire triangle and how we would get this yellow piece over here. Okay, so the area of the whole triangle, we're adding together all these little pink elements and each one of these, it's a rectangle. So base times height is the area of a rectangle and the height of each of these elements that is described by this equation here, right? So we're, we're multiplying this height by the base. And in this case, the base is our differential, our dx. So I'm going to substitute in for our height this entire equation in here. So h over ax dx. And if we integrate from 0 to a, you get this result 1 half kind of base times height. So we already know what the area of a triangle is, but that's good because you can recognize this, right? So area equals one half base times height. And what we're solving for here, this is that piece of what it was in the piecewise method. Okay, the next little chunk we're gonna have to get are these pieces over here. So let's go ahead over to here. And what we have is we're again going to be substituting in integrals every time we did have a summation sign here for pieces that is going to turn into an integral okay so we, we're summing up all the areas that's what we did before so this was our height times our base for each little piece and we're gonna take those integrals from zero to a and then on the numerator, we need to find the distance to that thing. So for each of our elements here, so here's our elements, and we're adding together all those elements, right? Just element over element over element. So if we think of just one of these guys here, so if we just look at, let's say, this element, and we're trying to find the distance the x distance to the centroid of that element. Okay, so that's this one. And I'm multiplying this distance by the area, which is this y dx. Okay, so what is that going to look like for the x direction? So x dA, and again, this is the numerator of this. So x dA is going to be equal to x. So here's our element. So we're looking at the distance to the, to the center of this element, and then we're multiplying that by that area. Okay, and the area is going to be y times dx. 
So this is the numerator of that guy. And if you crank through, so x, and then here's our, our equation for y of x. That's the slope of the line, rise over run times x, dx. And we're going to go from 0 to a. We'll find, so this is the numerator. And then we're going to divide that through by our area. So that was the area at the bottom. And so 1 third h a squared over 1 half a h, you end up with 2 thirds times a. So that's the x at. And hopefully you recognize that from the tables. OK, so the, the centroid on this is going to be right here. It's a third from the back, or it's 2 thirds. It's 2 thirds from the y-axis. OK, let me pop over. And um, I'm going to show you how to crank through some calculus in Desmos. So in case you haven't had calculus in a while and the math is a hard part of it, there's this really great website to use. OK, so here we are over at Desmos.com. This is a calculator. It graphs. It does calculus. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and define my function that I'm going to use for this triangle. So I'll say f is a function of x is equal to, and I can say h divided by a times x. So you can actually use variables in here, but to graph it out, you need a number for that variable, right? So this allows me to add sliders in here to put, um, to put variables in. So if, if h is like 6 and a is like 9, and you can watch the, the graph change as you're changing these variables in your function. So pretty cool. But for now, I'll go ahead and just put in these numbers instead. So we're going to give this a height of 6 and a base of 9. And now we have an equation. You can see that it's color coded. So this green line goes with this green function. OK, the next thing we would like it to do is some calculus for us. So let's say we want to crank through the area. And we'll go from 0 to 9 on this. So I'm going to click anywhere in here to add kind of a new little box. And I can either type INT, or there's this little keyboard down here. If you click on it, it has this templates for all these little functions. And under miscellaneous, you can grab a template out there too. But um, INT, that works great. So we're going to integrate this from 0 to, in our case, a is equal to 9. And I'm going to put in that function that we just defined, dx. And you can see the area of our triangle, 1 half base times height, 1 half 6 times 9 is 27. So it has evaluated this integral for us. And that is going to be our area. OK, how about this numerator part? So now we don't just want the area. We want that centroid of each element times the area. So I'm going to make a new integration here, same thing from 0 to 9. And just let Desmos crank through the math for me. So in this case, I want to do x times f of x dx. And so this would be the numerator here. So up here, all of the elements added together, x times this dA. And then if I want to find the centroid, my x centroid of this, so this should be 2 thirds times my base. And remember, my base in this case is 9. So 2 thirds times 9, I should get 6. So if I divide this numerator, 162, divided by the area, 27, there we go. We get 6. 2 thirds times 9 is 6. So this is a really, really handy way to do your calculus. And go ahead and just use your snipping tool if you're on a Windows computer or do a screen capture if you're on a Mac. 
but you can grab the snipping tool and show me your work just like that if you want some help cranking through the calculus on this stuff. Okay, coming back this time, let's go ahead and find the Y centroid. So once again, we're looking at individual elements here and the centroid of each individual element. Now notice for the Y direction, the centroid of the element, it's halfway through, right? So, so we're going up halfway to get to that element. So this little chunk right here, the centroid, that is half of the height of our equation. So we have the, let me just highlight it here. So we have the, the center of the element, that's this little piece right here, where we're going to plug in that entire equation for, for our height. And then we're also having the area. So the area is just like before, where we have the base times the height. So all of this is the area. So, he, so what we end up with is we have this whole equation squared, because we have y squared, but we also have that one half in there. So don't forget about that one half when you're thinking about the elements. Okay, so if you crank through all of this, in the case for the y direction, if we take this, this numerator, 1 6 h squared a, and divide it by the area, 1 half base times height, 2 6 ends up being 1 third. And you can also hopefully recognize that from the table. So if I'm looking for the y centroid of this thing, it's going to be one third of our height over here. Okay, let's go ahead over to Desmos and do one more in Desmos. So here we are back at Desmos. So we already defined the equation for our line, this is where we found what was happening in the x direction and in the y direction, instead of x times f of x, we have 1 half y times y dx. So I'm going to go ahead and start again with int to get that integral up. Same integration limit, 0 to 9, but this time 1 half, isn't that nice when you just do the backslash, it automatically makes you a nice fraction. And I'm going to do y times y dx. And look at that, it cranked through all of this calculus for us, it plugged in the numbers, and this is going to be what our numerator is, right? So here's our numerator for y direction, and remember what our area was, so height times base, so there's our area. So if I go ahead and just take 54 divided by 27, we get 2. And if you remember what our height was, our height was 6. And so where our y centroid is, is 1 third of 6. 6 over 3 is 2. So that would be where our centroid is for the, the y. I hope you are able to, to play around in Desmos all um, I'll post this link on there. They have a lot of great tutorials to go through. So um, for the graph, you can customize the graph up here with this little guy. So you can set the, sometimes that's one of the most frustrating things is just, so zoom in and out with your mouse rolling button. And then you can also set the um, X and the Y axis right here for, for what that is. But this is a very, very nice tool to use. It will do um, integration. It will even do integrals, so our differentiation. If I have something like, um, I'll do, need to make a different one. Let's say G sub X equals three plus five X minus one half times A times so that would be like constant acceleration equation or something, right? So let's say I have my position, and in this case, time would be on my x-axis, but I could take the derivative 
There we go. So there's the derivative of that is the blue line. There's my acceleration. So it will do um, derivatives as well as doing integration and crank through numbers for you very easily. It's a, it's a great, great tool. And then you can come over to, uh, to the graph and you can click on the graph and it'll tell you points. So you can very easily find maximum, find where two lines come together, what's happening at zero or something. I can evaluate this function. Maybe I want to know what's happening at three seconds or something. So I just plug it in and that's what's happening at three seconds. So very, very cool tool that I hope you, you play around with a bit.